What's that? Charger. Is it? God, I could do with some charger. Yeah. I want a little. So we have some sympathy for Daytac. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, someone just said it looked like in prison Daytac seemed to be scared, fearful. And I thought, yeah, well, I guess he, uh, you know, he's not made of stone. You know? And it's interesting to play that, I guess, when he does become a little more vulnerable and um, with Trena. Uh, Doc Yule, so yeah, he, whether he's scared of losing his business or losing his family, who knows what he feels losing most or his life, but um, it's definitely it's a, it's a rocky road ahead for Data Car. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun to play that. And the dichotomy is he's done all these really horrible things, and yet here you are feeling sorry for him. Yeah, what is that? You guys are crazy. You guys are weird. <laughs> yeah, I think all these anti-heroes. I mean, I was always a big fan of Jimmy Cagney back in the day in White Heat or Angels with Dirty Faces, where the, the priest goes to see him, and there's the kids. Oops, oh, sorry. And they end up saying. You know, you, you have to squeal when you go to the electric chair, and he's like, "There's no way I'm squealing, no way I'm squealing." And subsequently, he he starts screaming just before he gets taken to the chair. I just, I always remember that moment. So yeah, I mean, I think you do have a. Hopefully, it's nice if people do have that because it, I guess, is an empathy you might have with this guy because he is a, he's a victimizer, but he, in some ways he's a. He's a victim as well, and sort of of his of his disturbed, um, maybe abusive upbringing. So um, sometimes in society we create we create monsters. Can we expect a reconciliation between Detek and his wife? I certainly I certainly hope so. <laughs> I need a bath. I know, right? <laughs> Um, no, Jamie's amazing. She's a good, great pal, and she's so uh, wonderful in the part. Um, I think Daytac's got a lot to learn. You know, he's, he's um, as she said in the panel, he is a blunt instrument, and he needs to, um, you know, he needs to sharpen up his uh, his his approach to life and his approach to his wife and approach to to women in, 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 in general and be a bit more respectful and a bit more he, he can't it's like touching a nerve with day tactile if you touch a nerve it automatically just it, 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 it leaps out at you it jumps attacks so I think that uh, well there's a moment in season two which you may recall where he gets someone gobs in his face and he uh, he, he holds it back because if he if he did react again, then he's he's going to be back in prison. But um, I think that he, he's he's back in the gutter again, and I think that he's he wants his power back, he wants his kingdom back, and he certainly wants his wife back. Um, I think at the end of that bath scene, if you if you saw that, um, there was a look in his face of. of Oh my God! What have I done? Um, and I think that he, he knew that. Maybe without admitting it, you know, she may get her own back because hell hath no fury, as it were. So, um, but I think they I think they may get back together, um, or they may kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> is, it a, is it a challenging character to play? It is. It, I mean, it, uh, there's this. Uh, certainly, the second season. The first season was also, but the second season. I think, uh, no pun intended. I was. Uh, I'd, I'd rather Daytac wasn't just black and white. You know, he's definitely a grey area with his. Um, obviously, the way he looks, but his personality as well. He's. You know, he's got different dimensions to to him, and in some ways, rather ironically, he is he, he is quite human in many ways. He feels he um, he feels deeply, but yeah, I think there's there's certainly a lot of challenging moments. Um, the beginning, the end of season two, there's some quite emotional emotional moving moments that happen between. Daytac and Stammer, that were um, they were challenging, but they were challenging because they were they were interesting and they were uh, there was complexities that takes their relationship into a new area that um, 
that maybe they actually start behaving like a proper husband and wife um, without uh, without actually uh, murdering everybody who disagrees with them. Um, but uh, so yeah, there was challenges, but challenges that uh, you know one likes to one likes to have and likes to rise to. I guess. He seems very strongly tethered still to this alien culture. Is he gonna cut that umbilical a little bit? No, sure. I mean, I think he he, he is attached to his alien culture, and he isn't. You know, I think um, it's like I guess it's very much like. Um, so human culture or, or religions in some ways it's uh, when it suits man or woman to be part of the, the culture it's, it's you know they'll, they'll, they'll exploit it in some ways and then other days you're like oh no I don't believe in anything or I don't believe but Daytag I think he um, I think he's playing it now you know he's getting he's getting a little smarter you know he didn't he wasn't with his wife for quite a while and uh, you know, in many ways, Stammer always did was pulling the strings backstage, as it were. And because she hasn't been around, he's sort of reverted back to the way he was before he met Stammer. He's still a blunt instrument, but he's a he's he's cunning. You know, he's smart, but um, but uh, but he's he's still very volatile as well. So. Do you think he's going to learn from his time in prison a little bit? I think so, but you never know with this guy. You know? <laughs> I think that's what makes him fun to play. Um, uh, is is the sort of uh, the unpredictability of him and uh, and you know the way he treats people. But um, I think if people can empathise with him, I think that's a you know the writers of whatever what he's trying to create is a is a good thing. Because I mean, there's anti heroes like. Jimmy Cagney and White Heat or Tony Montana, you, you, they're bad guys in some ways, um, but, but there's something about them that's likeable and maybe human as well. Um, so, you know, through a lot of the like, 2000s, I would always see you as like a vampire character, like you're a vampire in Underworld, you're a vampire in Blade 2. Is it more fun to play a vampire or an alien? It's a good question. It's like the children of the night, what sweet music they make. But um, actually, when we were in Monte Carlo doing the TV festival, there was an Italian journalist, and, and he sort of nailed it. He said, like, Daytac and, and, and Stammer, they're like these like uh, the, these vampiric cowboys, you know, in this sort of backdrop. Um, but I mean, I, playing Marcus in Underworld was a, was a real joy, very challenging. I, I coined the phrase prosthetic depression because um, I went into makeup for seven hours, um, which is not too much fun. Working with Del, Diemo Del Toro is obviously a joy, and Ron Perlman's an old pal of mine. Um, great experiences, different experiences. But um, playing Daytac is, uh, is, is a lot of fun as well. There's not too much prosthetics in that, so that's a good thing. But um, I, I, the more the writers write for the character and the more you know, we play, play it out, uh, you're finding different things about the character all the time. But you're, it's like humanity in many ways. You never know, who am I today, you know? Um, what can I learn today? How's, how's life going to affect me today? How am I going to react to other human beings today? And I think that's what's interesting about Daytag is you just don't know what you're going to get, you know? So, um, yeah, all those characters are fun. And they're all very white, I guess. <laughs> the undead, I guess. Well, what's cool too is like in the series you have more time to develop. Like yeah, no, exactly. It's a middle, it's a beginning, middle, and an end. Right? Well, that's what's so interesting about a lot of television lately that the, the, the arcs of the, the women or the men characters are, are so, you know, they, they can last for, for such a long time. So, uh, uh, do you ever play the Defiance game? I've played it, yes. Yeah. I have the, recently. Because I've had a baby girl recently, I've, it's been tough <laughs> to play <laughs> to play any games, you know. Um, I, so, but it's fun. Do you play? Do you play? I haven't. I haven't had a chance to play much. Right. But right. you're yeah. too busy as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. I gotta shoot. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Real pleasure.